let you know about muting um, and, unless you're speaking. That way it keeps down the background noise. So thank you for that. The way it's going to work is our presentation has um, steps to it and we're going to go through each step and then have a break where you can ask questions. Um, any of the panel can make a comment if they have a comment about the information we just provided and then we'll go on to the next step. And also all the materials that we talk about tonight on the PowerPoint I will be sending out by an attachment and an email tomorrow. So don't worry about writing down all the websites and all that because it will be coming out to you. Um, so with all that being said, we can go ahead and get started. Okay, the, the first steps that we're talking about in our presentation tonight are adapted from the website of the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, which is HSLDA. And they are passionate advocates for homeschooling freedom and they offer support for every stage of your homeschooling journey. They have 95,000 families in the United States that are their members and their website is a, just a wealth of information and support. Um, so keep that website in mind. It's very helpful. Um, they recommend as you start off on your homeschool journey to set your GPS, which they have defined as goals, purposes, and system. And just a real quick rundown of that. The goals are the what of homeschooling. Uh, that's how you're going to measure and track your progress. Possible goals include providing a safe, nurturing educational environment for your children. And that is really um, pertinent at this time when all of us are concerned about the, the COVID pandemic. Uh, other goals are to stretch and encourage your kids with rigorous academics, to uh, cultivate positive peer influence, having the right friends, um, to customize the curriculum to special needs your child might have or a special interest they have, and also to have a flexible schedule to allow time for other priorities. And um, that was especially helpful with our family because my husband was a policeman for the time that we were homeschooling and his hours and days off were, were always different. So if we wanted to do something as a family, we were flexible enough to take off even if it was a regular school day. So that, that is one of the big pluses of homeschooling. And then we go from G to P, the purposes. Um, and this, is a, this list is a good one that you've made up to come back to if you have a bad day. Uh, it helps you to remember why you're doing this. Um, some purposes could be fostering a love of learning for your children, uh, providing them an academically excellent education, uh, fostering special values or, or the tenets of your religious faith, providing quality family time, or passing on their cultural heritage, uh, satisfying your children's special interests, or having an individualized learning pace, which is really important if your child needs a little bit of help. You, you don't have to try to keep up with everybody else. You can back up, go over some things and, and catch up later. Or if your child is way ahead of things, let them go. Just let them explore and do as well as they can. And then for GPS, the last letter S is for system, which is the how or the method. And we're gonna talk more about that later. Um, that's based on your child's learning style, your own teaching uh, style, and your own personality, and the educational approach that you choose. So those are the, uh, the components of the GPS. And we'll move on to the very first step, which is connect with parents already homeschooling. So that's the first thing they want you to do. Um, not go out and find your curriculum or whatever they say you need to connect with parents already homeschooling now this we can show you by the different groups that are in our local area and I, in going through this i'm going to ask some of our panel if they have um, experience with some of these groups the first one is the uh, classical conversations let's see karis it looks like we've got two people in the waiting room are they um can you see those? Okay, thanks. Thank you, Evan. Huh? Um, classical conversations are communities that exist to complement home-centered education. 
and they connect like-minded families together. Um, you can visit that website there and click on community search to find a location in your area. And then there's the edge, which is at Berean Community Church. And uh, Karis has had experience with that. I was gonna ask her to share a little bit about the edge. Hi, yes, I was a part of Edge for seven years. Um, it's a co-op, which means that all of the parents work together to help teach classes to each other's children. And um, so it meets at the Berean Community Church. It is a, a church-based organization. So it's a Christian homeschool and they meet for 10 weeks in the fall and for 10 weeks in the spring. And um, there it's for on a Friday morning from nine to 12. So your, your children get three hours of classes um, depending on what's offered that semester. Uh, and according to their age group, there's something for nursery, for pre preschool, for K through second, third through fifth, sixth through eight, and high school. Um, and it's a little different this semester with COVID. They've, they've had to move their classes outside and have limited classes, um, just difficulty of, of distancing. But normally, um, it's just a great time for kids to interact with their friends and moms to get a little bit of encouragement from others who are going through the same thing. Um, some of the classes are for our educational, you know, like kind of core subjects, but many of them are supplementary. Um, and it's a great opportunity to get your gym class in with other kids, speech class in with other kids, drama, things that are hard to do by yourself. Um, but then, you know, like my, my daughters got to do their high school biology lab there, or thing, things like that. Just, um, it was great for for a mix of things that supplemented your core classes and just kind of fun art or cooking or um i don't know just random things whatever the parents were experts in um and so to to join you do, you do have to contact the church and go through an interview with the pastor about homeschooling um so yeah we we thank you very much Appreciate it. Sure. Another group in our area is um, socially learning in Milford, et cetera, SLIME. And um, I believe that a member from the group is with us tonight, Heather Donahue. Heather, do you mind sharing a little bit about your group? Hi, everyone. Um, yes, this year we are meeting outside also. We will be bouncing around from playgrounds and state parks. Um, you can email me directly at slimehomeschool411 at gmail.com. We are doing nature-based studies uh, for the first month, so looking at the different trees and plants around our area. We'll be going on hikes in different places. We have ages 4 to 17 this year. Wow. We will be working together for the first hour of our meetings. Our meetings are Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. There's no registration fee this year since we won't have a building to pay for. Yes. <laughs> well, that's a plus, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Well, thank you very much. That's very informative. Well, you're welcome. We also have some other advocacy groups and umbrella schools. Um, and one of them, Acorn Christian School, is one that Darlene is very heavily involved with. Um, Darlene, would you like to share a little bit about Acorn? Are you still there, Darlene? Here we go. I think you can hear me now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, great. <laughs> For some reason, I can't see my own video, but I guess if you can see me or hear me. <laughs> yes, we can do both. Or I can do both. <laughs> um, I have been a part of Acorn Christian School since my daughter was first grade, I guess. Um, and I have had different roles there, but um, this is my 
first year in a while that I'm not the activity coordinator. So um, I have been very busy with um, planning events and, and things the last number of years, but our homeschool group um, is an umbrella group, as, as she said. Um, it provides social activities for the kids at least once a month, sometimes more. Um, it also provides a diploma and a transcript if you choose to report through Acorn Christian School. You can choose to report um, just right through the state, which I imagine Robin will tell more about later. Mm -hmm. um, but our, our group, of course, teaches, um, it doesn't teach the classes per se, but um, encourages each parent to teach Bible at home. And in addition to that, uh, the curriculum is, is up to you as far as what company curriculum you choose and um, that kind of thing. But it's, it's mostly there uh, for support. I enjoy meeting with other parents and talking with them about struggles they're facing and struggles I'm facing and getting encouragement back and forth um, through our group, as well as the kids' socialization, playtime together, and, and um, seasonal parties. We have a Thanksgiving feast that seems to be our, our best attended event. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure how that's going to work with COVID by Thanksgiving. If, if the restrictions are still as tight as they are, we may not be able to have that. We may have to do something else instead. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a, um, a group that seeks to follow the Lord and teach our children in his ways. Great. Well, thank you very much. And there's other um, groups and umbrella schools listed there. I'm trying to see if there's any to highlight. Um, the Homeschool Action Network is a, a good source of statewide news and resources. I know that I was looking at their um, website and it helped me understand what was going on with the timing of um, getting your enrollment into the state so that they have up to the latest minute news on the, the Homeschool Action Network. Um, and Tri-State Homeschool, uh, that's a um, good one to know about because especially with Brianna up in Wilmington area, it's uh, quite a large Christian homeschool group in Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. So um, it's a hub that connects homeschoolers to a variety of social, athletic, artistic, scholastic, and competitive groups. So uh, there's all sorts of, and this is only skimming the surface. There are so many groups out there. Um, if you just email, uh, Google homeschool groups in your area, I'm sure you'll find, find quite a few. And there are also uh, social media groups. Um, just to highlight on this one, the Delmarva Christian Homeschoolers, that one of all the groups I looked at seemed to be the most active, um, most up to date with lots of, of comments. But the others, the others are good groups as well. Um, and then there's Yahoo groups here. And uh, I think Karis was telling me, uh, Karis, that you received the family's newsletter. Is that true? Are you there, Karis? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, they, they are based down in Ocean City and Salisbury area. And they do offer a lot of things, but it, it's just too far for me to go. Um, but I do take advantage of their annual um, Jolly Rogers water park discount days. They do a homeschool <laughs> discount. So I get on their email list and I just, you know, I just get the emails. And once in June and once in August, um, you, get, you get a great discounted rate for a homeschool day at the water park. And it, it's a lot of fun. Well, that sounds great. Yes. And Rita, did you have any groups that you're involved with that you would like to share about? Um, we actually are just part of a, some of some friends of mine um, who also homeschool. We have a couple families and we just kind of get together and do stuff um, socially just a couple times a month. Sometimes we have mom's nights. Um, so it's not really an official group. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you, you know, if, if we have moms here who have other moms around them who, you know, who homeschool, I just encourage you to get, if nothing else, get, 
get a group of you guys together and kind of make a plan for um, just doing some fun stuff with your kids and just as moms and stuff, it's, it's helpful to just have some stuff on the calendar. Yes, that's very true. Um, were there any questions from the uh, participants about homeschool groups and uh, connecting with other parents? There's a comment in the chat from Heather Donahue. She uh -huh. says, I highly recommend joining the Facebook group, Homeschool Delaware. Very helpful and informative. Oh, great. Homeschool Delaware. So I agree. Some of the Facebook groups are a fantastic way to find out what's going on around you for homeschoolers. Yes. Thank you, Heather. Thank you for that comment. Um, also, I was going to mention that when you do finally end up choosing a curriculum for your homeschool, quite often you can find um, online user groups um, that will get together and share tips and tricks and um, stories about their use of the curriculum. Um, such as with Abeka, I was looking at their Facebook group. They have over 37,000 members. Uh, and just within the last 30 days, they added over 6,000 members. So a lot of people are starting to homeschool. So um, speaking of that, we will move right along to how you, step two, which is how do you understand your state's homeschool law. Um, in Delaware, it's pretty simple. Um, the compulsory attendance, um, you must have your children in school if you live in Delaware and they're between the ages of five and 18. Um, and if you plan to homeschool, you must open a, a non-public school with the Delaware Department of Education. So, and that's done in this way. Um, this is a, a three-step process in having an open active non-public school. You're supposed to register with DDOE, report your annual enrollment, report your annual attendance. And to start that process, you visit the website shown right there, that page, um, and it walks you through the process. And if you have any questions, you can email the email address there. They say that they are not manning their uh, office during the COVID pandemic. So the email is the only way you're gonna be able to reach them. And um, they did say, please be patient because they're pretty swamped with emails, but they answer them in the order that they receive them. So in order to um, register to get your homeschool open, there's three steps. The first is through that uh, website we referenced on the previous slide, and you apply for an Ed Access account. And that's through the link opening a non-public school. And then through the same link, you log on to the non-public school application and fill it out. And when you complete it and submit it, it's now in a pending status the DDOE will review it and then notify you that your school is approved or open. You then go in and to your account again and print out the acknowledgement letter that you find at the top of the homepage. And that's the letter you need to take to your, uh, if you're withdrawing your child from a public school, you need to have them, your school, your non-public school opened and your child enrolled, taking the acknowledgement letter with you to the public school to withdraw them. The next step is you need to report your enrollment every year and the report period is from August 2nd to October 5th. And that's again through the non-public school application on the DDOE page. Reporting how many students, who the students are that will be attending your school. And then you report the annual attendance and that's from June 1st to July 31st. And again through the non-public school application. Um, you report the number of days your non-public school was open and the total number of attendance days that each student attended. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, do any of the panel have any uh, comments on that? Because I haven't done it personally, I just took this off the website. Any ideas, Rita, Karis, and um, Darlene, any suggestions or things to watch out for? I've never run into any problems um, mm -hmm. reporting or anything. I know some people occasionally have problems on the website, but it's always been smooth sailing for me. So it's just, it's just been an easy click the things, yeah. put in the days. <laughs> That's great. So. Yeah, I know that I'm, I'm surprised at how easy it is really. So yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's great. And one thing I did want to say, I didn't have a slide for this, but I just thought it was very interesting that the Department of Education wanted you to know that they don't provide or recommend curriculum, they don't issue report cards, they don't issue diplomas, they don't a standard, they don't administer assessment tests, they don't sign social security forms, and homeschoolers cannot participate in public school sports. Um, but they, as Darlene mentioned earlier about her daughter, they do uh, provide one free driver education course through an adult education program to homeschoolers. So that is one, one thing they do provide. If there are no other questions, are there any questions in the chat box, Ms. Karras? No, no more questions. Okay, great, thank you. Well, we will move along then to um, step three, which is learning about learning styles, teaching styles, and educational approaches. Um, and this, the first model of learning styles, it's called VARC. Um, and you can see there in the graphic that um, if you're a visual learner, you learn best through pictures and diagrams and illustrations. And if you're an oral learner, you learn best through listening, lectures and recordings. And I can imagine that that would be through music and songs as well. I know our kids uh, learn their phonics through sing, spell, read and write. And I can still sing you the short vowel song. <laughs> um, and then there, there, there's the learning style of read and write where you learn the best by reading material and writing summations. And then the kinesthetic, which is learning best by observing and experiencing um, and experimenting. We did want to encourage people to sign up for the Homeschooling 101 Zoom session on re uncovering your child's learning style. This is going to be on Friday, September 18th at 3 p.m. So they'll be talking more about these learning styles. And you can register for that through our website or by calling the number listed there. And just one more slide on learning styles seven ways to learn. Uh, the first four are exactly what we talked about in the VARC model. And this one adds three more, a learning best by logic, reasoning, and systems. That's the logic, logical or mathematical mind. And then the interpersonal, where you learn best in groups or with other people. And then the intrapersonal, where you learn best by working alone and using self-study. Um, and you can look at the link down there at the bottom if you want to help determine what your child's best learning preference is. That's helpful to help you know what kind of curriculum to have and use and what sort of strategies to use when teaching. Before we move on, are there to the educational approaches, are there any um, comments or questions about learning styles? I would just add that a child can have more than one strength in that as well. Mm -hmm. um, that they can they can be visual and oral, or they can be visual and kinesthetic, or um, they can they can have more than one of those modalities. And, and um, it's a challenge sometimes to figure out which one is their strongest. But mm -hmm. there are tests and things that you can do, like you said. Yeah. Okay. And do you find that um, varies for different subjects? Like in, if it's math, they do better this way. If it's language, they do better that way or? I'm not sure what to say on that. Um, I, I've seen, I mean, I've, I've taught, um, well, I substituted in all different schools, but then I also taught at Greenwood Mennonite and and I could see kids that, that definitely had their, their strength in, you know, seeing and taking notes and reading what they had written. Other ones, unless they heard it, it they, they didn't yeah. retain it. Uh -huh. um, and, I, and there were other ones that definitely were kinesthetic learners that they would, they would be tapping something or, or um, moving constantly. And if I took the object away from them, they would find another object to be tapping. It was, it was uh -huh. the, way they, the way they learned, I guess. Yeah. Um, my daughters don't have the same learning style either. The two of them are, are different in the way they learn. Um, 
I, I don't know that I have narrowed down exactly, you know, what their strongest one is. Um, but yeah, I think it could be different in different subjects. Although I, I think overall their, their learning style would be one, one more so than some of the others. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Another thing to consider is teaching styles. And this is um, where we look at ourselves as a teacher. Um, in what ways do we, we feel the most comfortable in, in conveying knowledge or skills? And what kind of scheduling works best for us? Are we spontaneous or do you prefer routine and order? What's your personality like? Um, and again, here's a link to a, an assessment where you can um, find out about yourself and what would you would feel the most comfortable with as a teacher. Um, Darlene and Karis and Rita, have you had any um, aha moments for yourself where you realized, you know, I work better this way or um, anything like that? Um, for myself, I, I feel like I'm always learning something new about myself. Mm -hmm. I think I have myself pegged and then I'll be like, no, that's not how that works. So I feel like it changes for me sometimes, but um, I definitely, for myself, I think I mostly enjoy um, having visual things to go along with it. I feel uh -huh. like it's easier for me to teach that way. So that's uh -huh. just one thing I've learned. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments or questions in the chat, Harris? I'm assuming, I'm assuming not. <laughs> well, another thing to consider um, is when you're learning about how to teach is uh, educational approaches. Um, there are all sorts of different kinds of educational approaches. And um, when I send out the, the information, it'll give a um, description of all of these in, in more detail. But um, the classical is what we talked about with the classical conversations. Um, and then Charlotte Mason was a, um, an educator in England in the turn of the 20th century. And she felt that um, kids learn best by being exposed to real books or living books. Um, and she believed that education should involve the whole person, not just the mind. So uh, there are Charlotte Mason uh, curriculums and groups. Um, there's also the traditional or textbook. And this is where um, you just, sort of mimic a regular school classroom. Uh, so that would be probably what I did back in 1989. Uh, we just did what you would find in a regular classroom. Uh, there's a box curriculum where um, the whole, your whole uh, curriculum gets sent to you, everything that you need. Um, and it just guides you through how to teach each subject. Then there's the unschooling, which a relaxed homeschooling, which in my personality, I would not feel comfortable with. Um, I have to have structure and order, but this is where um, families just pursue what the children are interested in. And um, they don't have any particular curriculum, but if the child is interested in Egypt, uh, they go to the library, they order books on Egypt, they study about it, they make, um, they make a pyramid, they just study all that they can and do whatever they can in order to learn more about Egypt. Um, and they can in, uh, take into account all the different, the math and the English and science in, in the building of the pyramid or um, just all sorts of ways to include all the subjects. And then there's Montessori, which we all have heard of before, um, where there's the self-directed activity and hands-on learning. So, and, so that's one aspect. And there's also the Waldorf, which is, um, I've never heard of that before, but it's a holistic educational model where they cultivate imagination and creativity. So that's what that stresses. And then you have mixed or eclectic, which is where uh, maybe you want to teach this subject with Charlotte Mason and you want to teach that subject um, with classical aspects. So you just take whatever works best for you. And then the multiple intelligences, which is sort of a little bit like what Darlene was talking about, where um, you, uh, you have a strength and there's all sorts of kinds of intelligences. There's 
visual, there's uh, linguistic, there's logical, there's musical, and where you teach to the, the strength that your child has. Uh, it works out a lot better for them and for you. Um, so in order to learn more and, and see if you can find out what your best educational approach would be, you can take this assessment at the bottom of the page there. So are there any, any questions about educational approaches? Which one would you guys say works the best or it's based on case by case, right? Based on yeah. what I'm hearing. Right, based on, on the child themselves and, the, um, and the family situation. Does that help answer your question? Yes. Okay. And that's one thing about um, homeschooling is that's really neat is that if something doesn't work, try something else. Um, it, it's not like you have to be locked in to a particular thing once you discover that it's not working. Or maybe you find that if you just tweaked it a little bit this way, it would work better and, and you're free to do that. Um, Rita and Darlene and Karis, did you ever get in the middle of a school year and decide, oops, this isn't working, got to find something else? I, I did um, for certain subjects. Um, so I, I was, I used a Becca and um, you know, it's the box curriculum, everything's provided and it's a traditional school curriculum. Uh -huh. That a lot, but I had a child who just couldn't do their math. It just, you know, she couldn't get it, just it wasn't working. So we just decided forget the math, and I ordered a new math for that year, and it just the tears stopped for her and for me, and it was so much better. <laughs> and you know, she's she's doing okay, she's in college, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> That's great. Anyone else? I have a comment, which I'll just read. Uh -huh. um, please remember, you don't have to recreate school at home, but can do it if it works for your family. You don't have to use a box curriculum. You can let your, um, your children's interests lead your learning. Um, you don't have to pick a curriculum and stick with it. If it's not working, move on. And what works for one child might not work for the other child. And school doesn't have to happen during a certain time. Most important, you can do this. Uh -huh. There for that. Very good. And who was that from? That was from Heather Donahue. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Heather. Good, good advice there. Yes, it is. I would agree. Very wise advice. <laughs> I would also second Karis's um, struggle with, with high school math. That was our issue too, that, that I had to switch curriculums mid-year and I, I am um, not very um, open to change, I guess. I, I struggle with having to change mid-year like that. It was not my, um, not my cup of tea to have to do that, but on the same hand, we were spending three hours one day on math, and I said, that is just too much, and we can't keep doing this. She was frustrated, I was frustrated, and, and we switched curriculums, and um, I was very thankful for, for the curriculum that I found. Um, teaching textbooks was what I decided to use in, in math, and it went so much better after we switched. Um, so I'm, I'm all for mixing curriculums. I, w I was thinking earlier when you're talking about curriculums that you don't have to use all one kind. You can use one thing for math, one thing for English, one thing for science, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. So, yes, that's great. Thank you. I know when we started, we started with the box curriculum. And then as I got more confident as the years went by, that's when I started choosing, picking and choosing and uh, finding out what worked best and didn't have to stick with the same um, box of curriculum. So, and then there's one other um, aspect that I want to talk about when talking about uh, educational approaches that I'd never heard of this term before. I don't know if Darlene and Karis and Rita have, but talking about de-schooling, um, where the 
it's an adjustment period when it, that a child goes through when they leave regular school and be, begin homeschooling. Um, people claim that to fully benefit from homeschooling, they have to let go of private or public school culture. And it's a time of doing very little formal schoolwork in order to recalibrate their natural love of learning. So that's something to consider if um, your child's been going to public school and, and have, you've decided to homeschool them because of the pandemic, um, that you might need a little bit of time for them to um, do a little bit of exploring and just uh, not so much formal schoolwork in order to get them interested in learning again. So, well, then we move on to step four, which is finding your, your child's curriculum. And um, sometimes we ask, what, what do you teach? Um, and that depends on the ages of your children and your own goals, which we talked about at the beginning. Um, also talking about determining your student's grade level. There's um, this assessment, the link to that assessment there, that'll help you know what grade level your, your kids should be at. And also, um, as Kara shared with me one day, that many curriculum providers offer free placement tests. So um, that is very helpful if you're ordering, say, a, a math curriculum, you can have your child take the placement test and know which um, grade you want to start them in to where they'll, they won't be too far ahead or too far behind. They'll be right on, on target. And um, the last link there is on types of placement test tools, um, things that you can use in order to determine that. And then we go to um, samples of curriculum and there's, there's all sorts of, um, the list that I'm gonna be sending out has probably five times the amount of these lists here, but I didn't wanna list all of them. But uh, this shows you the different kinds of curriculum you can get for the different approaches. Um, we've already talked about Abeka for traditional and the classical has classical conversations in my father's world. Um, I won't read them all to you, but uh, Charlotte Mason we also talked about and then the unit studies um, where um, do any of you do unit studies Darlene or Karis or Rita? No. I did of sorts when my girls were younger. Um, I used uh, five below which I guess you could count as a, as a unit study. Um, I, I don't know maybe not um, <laughs> but I, I did study topics with them when they were younger and, and you know, look for a lot of books about that topic. I used the mm -hmm. library a lot when they were very young. Mm -hmm. And at times I had 50 books out on my account and some out on their accounts as well in order to, to have enough books for two weeks at a time or whatever, um, planning mm -hmm. ahead as I do for, for their schooling. Know, having to order from other libraries to get all the things I wanted for all the subjects or whatever but you know mm -hmm. um, I've, I've done some unit studies when they were younger it was easier to do. Uh -huh. Great thank you. Robin I'd just like to add one comment um, mm -hmm. in the chat box that there's um, easy peasy all-in-one homeschool is a great free curriculum even if it's just a starting point so if you Maybe if you, you know, you, you want to start homeschooling, you just, you don't want to put any money out in the beginning and just have something to start working on while you figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. Easy peasy all in one homeschool is, a, is an option. Yes, that is a great idea. I um, included it on the next, yeah, there's a free um, upper right. Okay. And, oh, you've got it. <laughs> and then there's Khan Academy and Freedom Homeschooling, and there are also other ones listed on the materials I'll be sending out. So that is a great idea. That's one thing that HSLDA recommends is don't, don't overspend on your first year. Um, just feel your way and, and uh, be conservative on what you buy. Um, so there's other, there's the distance online learning, which is where the children watch videos of recorded uh, classes. And then there's live online where they actually attend a class that is currently being uh, taught and they can tune in uh, and watch those. And then there's um, a whole bunch of other ones that can't really be classified. Uh, I know Darlene has also already mentioned teaching textbooks and 
I know Saxon, our kids use that for math. It was, um, most people really like Saxon or they really hate it, but our kids liked it. Um, and then ACE, uh, those are accelerated Christian education that that's another um, well-known uh, curriculum provider. So does anybody have any other questions or comments about curriculum? One other thing to um, realize is that there's so many choices and how do you choose? Um, and one very good recommendation I would give for reviews would be the Kathy Duffy reviews.com. Um, she's got a very good reputation for uh, giving good reviews of uh, homeschool curriculum. And then the homeschoolmom.com has good ones too. And there are a whole bunch of other ones, uh, but those are two that, that could be very helpful. And if there are no other questions on curriculum, um, Rita, what curriculum do you use? Um, I use a mix of a lot of different things. I don't think I've, there are very few things that I've stayed with from year to uh -huh. year. Uh -huh. um, I, I, I love to try new things too. And, and uh, of course, everything always looks amazing when you're looking at it. <laughs> uh -huh. um, yes. But like Darlene, uh, we love teaching textbooks for math. That is one uh -huh. thing that uh, we have used ever since I think fourth grade. Uh -huh. And it's worked really well for us. So great. Um, what do you like about it? I like that I don't have to teach it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh huh. The textbook does. Huh? It does. Yes. Yeah. It's just software on the computer, or you can do it online. Uh -huh. um, you know, and they have a, a teaching lesson, and then they take you through the problems and stuff. And so it took the pressure off of me um, of the actual teaching part, and I can always be available to help with problems if they need them, but um, we just found that we butted heads so much over math and mm. um, it was taking, taking me teaching out of the equation uh, uh -huh. was, was necessary, so. Uh-huh, very yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I, I used teaching textbooks as well and it, yes, I completely agree with you, Rita. It's great that it, it kind of gives you a cartoon style um, video to walk and you see the teacher the cartoon writing the problem out and solving uh -huh. it and showing you how to do it and uh -huh. you go to do the problem in the homework or the practice uh, you can ask for a hint if you uh -huh. don't know what to do um and then and then it it it's self-grading and so uh -huh. you as a parent you can go in and see they got it right the first try, the second uh -huh. try, <laughs> uh -huh. and you yeah. can see, well, we might have to go over that or, uh -huh. or, you know, so it, it, it's, it's fantastic. Like you don't, you do not have to, um, teach it, but there are tools there to help you if you need to do some reinforcement. Uh-huh. Is oh, this a good. resource also for science also? I just, I feel like my strong suits would be like the language arts and the history kind of thing. I mean, I, I like science, but when it gets like into the upper grades, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the complexities. Mm. Yeah. I, um, teaching textbooks does not teach science, but there are many that do. Um, we, we went back and forth between Abeka and Bob Jones, which are, which are like a approved Class, you know, Christian school classroom, like accredited cu curriculum. So you can do it with just the textbook and, you know, all the workbooks and tests and quizzes, or you can actually purchase the, um, the rights to the videos for that year. So we did that. So my, my kids are spread out, you know, so like my first year when we started, I had a first grader, a fifth grader, a seventh grader. There's oh. no way I was going to cover those three grades every day. So they all had uh, video instruction pre-recorded and it helped me so much because like my first grader wasn't going to sit and watch all the videos, but my seventh grader was and she could she could get, a, you know, a, an excellent lecture every single day to go along with, you know, to, to teach the lesson and I knew she was getting solid teaching every day and that 
you know, as she went through high school, I wasn't going to be able to teach her biology and chemistry and physics every day. Um, I, I needed that for sure. Mm -hmm. Great. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yes, Rita and Darlene, any suggestions on science textbooks? I know for us this year, uh, my senior is, she's going to take chemistry and I, I was in the same boat. I didn't um, feel confident that I could teach it in a way that was going to be interesting and um, that she would be able to really grasp things. Um, I never, I didn't have a great high school experience with chemistry and so I wasn't confident in that, um, but I did find a completely online based um, curriculum. I think it's the website was diveintomath.com, but they've got um, all kinds of, of upper science curriculums and it's, it's taught online. Um, they have online textbooks um, and they even do like online labs and all of that stuff uh, mm -hmm. to, to just make it complete. And so and it was really affordable. I felt like it was a, a great deal and I'm really excited about it. We haven't actually started it yet, but uh -huh. um, I have my two oldest in, enrolled in those classes. And so I'm, I'm optimistic that it's going to um, be good for them. Great, yes. How about you, Darlene? Um, I'm in a little bit different boat on that. I mean, I. I sort of am at a little different boat. Um, my oldest daughter loves science. That's her favorite subject, probably. <laughs> she wants to be a vet. And so science comes natural for her, and especially if it has to do with animals. Um, if, if it has to do with earth science and, and um, astrology and things like that, she, she is not um, interested in that. So. <laughs> That yes. part of science, she can she can get a lower grade in, and and I talked to her about it, and she's like, I tried, I did my best, you know, but uh -huh. if it has to do with animals, she can ace it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that's where the Lord has gifted her. But anyway, that being said, we've mostly used Abeka, um, and that's primarily because that's what I taught when I was at Greenwood Mennonite School, mostly yeah. Abeka. And also, I believe it's a, a good challenging curriculum and one that is hard to beat. I think Bob Jones is pretty comparable. Um, I, I know that they're getting a good education and, and one that will serve them well for college. Uh -huh. So, um, I, like I said, I, I found their math difficult in high school. Um, I, I cannot teach their math. Uh, to my girls, so I, I switched, but um, I like Apologia, what I've seen of their science. Some of my other homeschool friends have used Apologia for science, and um, this year my daughter chose to take the marine biology. Uh, um, she did not want to take physics, and I couldn't blame her, and I couldn't teach <laughs> it to her, and so I found that Apologia had a good um, a good book for uh, marine biology. So that's what she's going to be taking this year. And I was Great. looking over it today and, and trying to do some lesson plans to get ready for it. Um, but they have some labs and things that she can do with a lot of things that are around the house. So that's, that's handy for us that I don't have to buy a lot of special equipment for it. There are yes. some things I'll need to buy. I, I noticed tonight it calls for unbleached sugar, which I guess is raw sugar, and I'll need to oh. get some of that because I don't have that on hand, but, uh -huh. you know, some basic things without having to go to a specialty science store for them. So yes. Okay, thank you. You know, one thing I was thinking of um, when we're thinking of trying to find different curriculums is that um, conferences, homeschool conferences, I hear, are wonderful places to find new curriculum. Um, in fact, Rita, your mom was telling me how she would be overwhelmed going to those, but that when you go, um, you know right where to go and you get all sorts of good buys. And so. Yes, I love going to those. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do they normally have them? Are, are there any in Delaware or are they usually out of state or? Uh, not in Delaware that I know of. There's um, normally 
in non-COVID times, there's uh -huh. uh, the, the Chap Home School is up in Lancaster, okay. Pennsylvania. And then they have um, the Heave Home School Convention, which is down in uh, near Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Uh -huh. I think those are the closest ones. Yes. So in, an, in regular times, those would be ones to look for to go look at. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then we can move on to the next step. Step number five is um, now that you've got your curriculum, you need to decide where you're going to homeschool um, and then create a schedule. I don't have it on this slide, but um, deciding where to homeschool is sort of a, an individual thing, depending on your your house, how big your house is, you can maybe use a corner of the family room or you're, you're fortunate enough to have a separate room for your homeschool. Um, even the kitchen table can sometimes be like these kids here. Well, it doesn't look like a kitchen table though, does it? Um, but it just depends on your family. Um, how about you, Rita and Karis and Darlene? Where do you school? We always did it in our dining room. Um, Oh, can you hear that thunder? Yes. Um, <laughs> we, we, my dining room didn't look very pretty for a lot of years. <laughs> um, it had our table in it, which was not really used for eating a whole lot. Uh -huh. um, but we had three desks in there and a, and a bookshelf. And wow. we stored all the, everything we needed. Everybody got a shelf of, you know, their uh -huh. books for the year. And I got a shelf for all my things I needed. And, um, so yeah, they each had a laptop and headphones for when they needed to watch their videos or they could just sit there and I, you know, I would help them at the big table, the big table. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and, you know, it, it did, I mean, we, we would clear it off to eat, but it just kind of, it became the schoolroom, and we, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't like a dining room for a lot of years, but uh -huh. we, together and I could I could keep an eye on them and if we needed to explain something and it was getting loud they you know they might go to their room for a while or out in the living room but um, it just it just helped me to make sure that everyone was paying attention and continuing their work um, and I could grade their work I, you know, whatever, as it got completed, I would just sit there and check it and make sure that they understood what they were doing that day. And uh -huh. if it needed to be reviewed, then I could do that right away. Great. Yes, thank you. How about you, Darlene? Our homeschooling takes place in a couple rooms of our house. Uh -huh. <laughs> it, it pretty much began at the, at the dining room table. Um, and it changed for my older one to the living room on the couch uh -huh. um, and I was hesitant to let her do that in the beginning it just didn't seem right to not have a desk or a table in front of her uh -huh. um, but she did well with it and uh -huh. and she sticks at her work and it's not um, distracting to be in the living room uh -huh. And so um, I've allowed her to continue to do that. And in some ways that was better because then she and her sister didn't distract each other uh -huh. in the living room and one in the, the dining room at the table. Um, uh -huh. And so I would, I would rotate back and forth if either of them needed help with something or, or needed me to give them an oral quiz or that kind of thing. Um, and sometimes that is a challenge. And I, I, I admire the parents who have many, many children. Mm -hmm. um, some of them in our homeschool group have six or eight children, and I don't know how they do it, but um, <laughs> yes. it's, it's very different than when you have six or eight in the classroom and they're all on the same level, mm -hmm. which, you know, that I can handle. But yes, I wonder, you know, I mean, I, I guess some of the older ones have to help the younger ones in order to, to school that many correctly. Um, yes. But anyway i'm i'm glad for the two that i have and um i i've been glad for times when they have to have patience with me to finish up with one before i can help the other yeah. or whatever yes yeah you know, we we don't have a specific you know this is our homeschool room kind of thing uh -huh. we do have bookshelves in the living room that one shelf is each daughter's and i have my things 
for each of them on the end of that shelf. Like one end mm. of the shelf is my teaching or my grading books for them. Mm -hmm. um, with, you know, theirs at the other end. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and below there, it talks about articles you can use to help you plan out your school year. Um, co many curriculums have it all planned out for you so you know how to uh, do your lesson plans, but some of them don't. So, and that's where it says about the nitty gritty lesson planning. That's where you get down and say, okay, we have so many pages to do in so many days. Let's divide it up and see how it, it works. Um, and there's also a link to um, different planning tools you can use, whether on paper or computer. Um, so there's different ways that you can go about that task. And, and also there's links to creating lesson plans from the homeschool mom and study.com down there. So um, also we also wanted to share with you that we're going to be having more homeschooling 101 sessions, uh, one on record keeping, rec report cards and transcripts on Friday, October 16th at three. And that's one that Karis is gonna be sharing about. And then schooling multiple ages on Friday, November 20th at three. And I'm not sure who's gonna be uh, hosting that one. So um, if you're interested, you can register at our calendar or by calling the number there. Um, then the last step six, almost the last step, they say to enjoy the learning process. Um, Evaluate with your kids, check in with them and see if there's anything that um, isn't working um, and go ahead and be willing to change it like we talked about earlier. Um, I think you can see that all Darlene and Rita and Karis all seem to enjoy the homeschooling that they do um, and it is a, a very special time um, so enjoy it. Um, be sure to keep records of your children's progress and look back at your GPS to see if you're meeting your goals, uh, fulfilling your purposes, and whether anything needs to be changed or adjusted. And then the last step is to celebrate your students' growth and achievement. Um, they suggest doing a three ring folder portfolio with pictures and examples of their work from beginning, middle, and end, um, recording any service projects they do or, or other special things they do, um, like with uh, slime and their 4-H involvement, you could report some there. And whatever else you might want to remember, um, be sure to decorate your fridge or wherever else is prominent with their best work. So, well, I would like to know if anyone else has any comments or questions um, before we stop our presentation. Um, I would just say real quick, um, I know that we were kind of talking curriculum and planning and different things like that, but I just, um, for those of you who are here who are starting homeschooling, um, I would just definitely say, um, give yourself lots of grace. Don't, don't compare yourself with other families uh, because your family is never going to look exactly like somebody else's family because you have unique children and they need specific things. Um, so you have to um, just keep that in mind and don't get caught up in the comparison trap and because it's very easy to do uh, when you especially are starting out you want to see what everybody else is doing and where what level they're at and how they're doing it and that just doesn't always work mm -hmm. for your family so um, be flexible and willing to just really pay attention to your family and your, your children and um, what they need for that year. Great, thank you. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, I'll agree with that too. I, uh -huh. I was going to say, keep the lines of communication open between you and your child, which obviously you do as a parent anyway. But um, if something isn't working between you and your child and teaching them, a lot of times it, it means that we need to reevaluate, you know, did the child get enough sleep? Did I get enough sleep? Um, how how is my attitude toward them and that affects their attitude toward me and um i i am a believer in the lord and and i know that my days go better if i start them in prayer and if i don't i i end up in trouble sometimes so um those are those are my suggestions um 
I don't know how you all feel about reading, but I, I really feel like phonics is the way to go. And, and I would strongly recommend teaching phonics as the beginning of learning to read um, because I've seen adults who didn't have phonics and it makes it harder for them to have the strategies they need to figure out a word. Um, there are sight words, but then there are also words, many words, you need the strategies to, to solve what that word is. If you've never seen a big name or word, um, one of the ways to, to sound it out is to learn phonics. And, and I think phonics is a, is a big plus that has helped my girls and I know helped me. I don't think it was called phonics back when I had school, but um, mm -hmm. I learned letter sounds and blends and things. And I, I think it basically was phonics. Yes. Yeah, I agree, Darlene. I think phonics is great because it teaches them how to think, how to put this principle and this principle together and form a word. Um, it, yeah, I think it's really great. That's good. And one thing that really helped me was to include some fun um, because there's a lot of hard work. There really is. You've got to get your 180 days in and you've got you know you've got goals to accomplish and i like to i like to finish every book and every workbook and i i couldn't in the first year we was the only year we did <laughs> <laughs> but then i i was okay with it because my kids were in school before we started homeschooling and they never 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 finished a textbook wow. uh -huh. the Very rule true. of thumb is if you finish 70 percent of it you've earned a credit for that year. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, life happens. Maybe maybe somebody's sick this week and somebody's sick that week, or um, one child needs more, needs to review this chapter. So, you know, you, it's okay. My goal is, I stopped making my goal being to complete every single thing and just yeah. focus on really learning what we were learning and having having like one fun day a month. The public schools have a uh, teacher in service day pretty much mm -hmm. every month of the year. Mm -hmm. And the kids don't go to school then. Yes. So we would have, you know, some, sometimes it would be a field trip with other homeschoolers or something, you know, something we just wanted to do, but just a day when you can get out of the house and go do something you all enjoy and realize, oh, we love each other again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so that, that really kind of refreshes everybody, me, them, we're all ready to go again after, yes. after that. And it's something, it's an incentive to look forward to, like, what are we going to do this month? And uh -huh. um, those kind of things. And yeah, if you can join a group, oh, join a group. We, we didn't have one our first year. And it was kind of lonely. I really uh -huh. didn't know any other homeschool families and we were just kind of out there on our own. And then we gradually got connected. And just, I think for me as a mom to be able to share stories and, you know, what's good and what's bad. And then for my kids just to get out and run around and, and have, have fun with other, other homeschool kids is so important. Yes. So. Great. Thank you. Well, Ajanik and Brianna and Colleen, do you have any questions? Any comments or questions? Well, we thank you so much for coming. Uh, I will mail out the attachment with all of this information tomorrow. I'm also going to include a schedule of events. And I guess Colleen would be the only one local, Kara, so I don't know if we'll share about all the different events uh, but i will send out a schedule of events so um and it's by by age level and um we have things going on trying to meet the needs of the community um and we still have some of the homeschool packets in our lobby um and if you had taken one pre previously which i think maybe colleen had um if you could if you do fill out the survey if you could drop that off in our book drop then we can um, get your information that way um, and last but not least, I just want to thank Rita and Darlene and Karen for their um, participation and contribution. I really enjoyed it. It was great. Thank you very much. I, I did have um, two things. I, I, wanted, I was wondering, like, 
what were your kids reactions to the homeschooling like where they see like the public school and like how other kids are going to school and then versus like what they're doing with you like I guess mm -hmm. just wanting to know what their responses were my my kids um were really like kind of surprised and then excited like they're they're like <laughs> after they thought of it, like what and then after they thought about it they said yeah i want to try that um and every single year i ask them do you want to do this again and i i always put that choice out there and they they all did until my son was in seventh grade and then he no longer wanted to uh -huh. okay um but my girls they wanted to finish out and they graduated with me um and it it worked well. I think my situation was a little bit like Robin's where my husband had just unusual work hours and always worked weekends, holidays and nights, you know, and when we started, he just, there were so many days, like he might go three days, never seeing them because they were asleep when he got home and when he left. And, um, and it gave us a little bit of freedom to, to make our family life work. Um, and we could, we could do school, you know, you don't have to do school Monday to Friday. You can do it on the weekend if you choose or, or whatever, or he can help on the weekdays that he's home. Mm -hmm. But yes, yes. They, they, they said that they liked it. The first two liked it. The second, the first, the third one liked it till middle school. <laughs> <laughs> if he wanted to go. And I think my only other one was the, um, sorry, with the parent, oh, parent versus teacher overlap, like, I just worry about, you know, this is like your mom and your teacher, mm -hmm. so, like, your experiences with that and how you separate, I do like that, Darlene, you talked a lot about, not to get into it, you know, too much, but you brought in the faith piece, I do agree with you on that, if that probably will help me in the future, taking that time first to say, okay, help me, Lord, I'm ready to do mom, and you're ready, to, but I don't know what everybody else's experience is with that, separating the two. You, you could do it, like, you could do it all day long if you wanted to, but I think for me, I, I had to learn, I was burning myself out, and I had to learn to say, it's done, we're, you know, it's three o'clock, it's four o'clock, whatever it is, we've had enough, and it's time to be a family again. I mean, I don't know how to, that's the right word, but it's yeah. time to go outside, go make dinner, go do okay. our, whatever we do in the evening. I needed to set a cutoff point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That helps. Any input, Rita or Darlene? It's tricky. I mean, you're right. It is. It's super tricky to kind of wear both of those hats. Um, because ultimately, you know, you want, you want to have the hearts of your children and you want to cultivate those relationships regardless of the hat you're wearing. Um, and it can be really hard to separate, but I think, Karis, that's a great idea to kind of, I mean, you don't stop being mom during school hours either, but to kind of put a limit on the teacher hat to say, okay, that's, now we're done. We're done, and we're going to set it aside. I think that's a great idea. Um, I've never thought about it in that specific way, but, um, but I, do like, I do like that. Thanks, Karis. I don't know that I have separated them per se, but in a way I do because once my girls are done their schoolwork, we're done for the day. I mean, I, I start with them in the morning and we have a little bit different situation because I take them with me to work in the afternoon. We have a family business and I'm able to take them along and um, then we get out of the house, but yet they can continue their schoolwork if it's not done in the morning, which, you know, the, the older one tip, typically is able to get hers done around noon time or so and the younger one takes a little bit longer but um, she's able to to do it at the office with us and so I help her um, with hers a little later or whatever um, and part of that is because I'm busy with the older one more in the morning and and so if if I'm not done with the younger one I help her then more in the afternoon or whatever and um there are times though when when something came up and and like last year I guess the older one was learning Spanish and so then I was teaching her 
Spanish and something came up and I said it in Spanish in the afternoon. She's like, I'm done school. (laughs) 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 Watch the teacher. (laughs) Uh, I'm not the best at at separating the two because I'm a teacher by profession anyway. And, and so it's all part of me being a teacher, being a mom, you know, um, Mm -hmm. who I am. So, (laughs) yes. Great. Any other questions or comments? No, I think this is a good start for me. Oh, good. I'm glad. Well, I was just going to suggest um, if you have any questions, further questions, just go ahead and email me and I can pass it on to our panel and see if what they, what kind of answers they might have. Um, and we're very happy to keep working with you on that. So, but thank you so much for coming. and. Um, as I said, our next one is going to be on the um, uncovering your child's learning style, and that's going to be in September. Uh, see if I can find where that is. Um, it's September 18th. Thank you, Paris. Yes. It's, three it's o'clock. at three o'clock. Yes. In the afternoon. So thank you. And we hope to see you then. I'll be sending that information out tomorrow. <laughs> thank you. Good night. Take care. <laughs>